tight end recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Coming at you, book the brand new Life After Navy episode. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about my life being stationed overseas in the military. And uh, this is a video response to my boy Kyle Gott, who uh, recently did a video talking about his time being stationed in Okinawa. And uh, he recently PCS'd back to the States in Las Vegas, I believe. Vegas, baby! <laughs> so I thought I'd talk about my own time being stationed overseas. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I was stationed in Yokosuka, Japan, on board USS Lassen, DDG-82, from 2013 to 2015. Now, they recently uh, went back to the States, but at the time, they were out in Japan. So <laughs> that's where I was at. Being stationed overseas, um, I made a lot of uh, videos of my time in Japan. Um, I've compiled them all into a playlist, so if you guys want to check that out, um, links will be down below in the boopity boops, so you can check out my Andy Japandi series, where I show you guys around different parts of Japan, uh, talk about Japanese things, and stuff like that. And I make videos outside of my apartment. <laughs> so be sure to check that out. Being an E5 at the time, I was also given the opportunity to live off base. And uh, again, during my time there, uh, the Akoska base didn't have a whole lot of on-base housing. So they would typically reserve that for the E4 and below crowd for barracks, and then for the E5 and up, or just people with families, they would have uh, on-base housing for them. But it was primarily geared towards uh, families. So since I didn't have a wife or kids, uh, <laughs> I was given the opportunity to live off base. But if you do have a, uh, a wife or kids or husband kids, whatever the case may be, um, you are able to live off base. It's just they encourage you to stay on base if you have kids. So that's just kind of what they do. But anyway, in my case, I was allowed to live off base. Um, I lived in a nice little neighborhood called Miharucho which is about three kilometers, two to three kilometers away from base. Um, so it took me about 10 to 15 minutes by bike to get back and forth to my place. And I had a lovely apartment overlooking Tokyo Bay, overlooking a nearby island called Sarushima, which stands for Monkey Island. And it was just a beautiful place. And it was definitely the best, best thing about living in Japan was living in Japan. <laughs> like literally where I was living at was to me, the best part about living in Japan, just getting to see the sunrise in the morning and then the sunset at night was just a beautiful experience. And I've taken so many pictures uh, during my time there just to see all that. I get a little nostalgic whenever I see pictures of that area pop up in my feed and whatnot. I'm just like, oh, I remember that time. <laughs> so I do, uh, I do wish to come back at some point. But uh, in any event, uh, since I was allowed to live off base, um, I decided to immerse myself more into Japan. And uh, I know that there are some people who, uh, whether they live, off, live on base or not, they prefer to stay on base. And you can do that. There are definitely enough resources to you, available to you, to where you can you know, live a perfectly normal life, just living off base, never leaving. You know, you got the Nex, which is basically like, you know, the Navy Walmart. So you can get a lot of uh, your daily stuff. You can get electronics, things like that. And uh, you can live a totally okay life living on, living on base. But for me, um, I love Japan a lot. And I wanted to uh, just immerse myself as much as I could. Uh, looking back, I probably could have done a better job, but you know, it is what it is. The only stuff I would really buy on base was like the stuff I couldn't get out in town. Um, electronics was a big one, like I got that TV you see in the back um, on base. And uh, one of the reasons for that was uh, with dealing with electronics, I would highly recommend that you stick to buying on base because a lot of electronics out in town in Japan don't have the option to change to an English menu. And uh, if your Japanese reading is okay, then it's not a problem. But uh, if you just want to have that option to be able to read stuff in like the options menu or whatever, you know, like for cameras, uh, games, anything electronic basically, if you want the option to read all that stuff in English, then I would highly recommend either buying on base 
or you would have to go to like one of the duty free shops and those are typically like all the way out in Tokyo and getting the international version which has an English option so that's just something to keep in mind because I did uh, buy a camera out in town thinking that oh it'll have the English menu it's no problem you know it's, who cares right <laughs> but it didn't so yeah <laughs> so buyer beware so of the stuff that I would buy on base was typically like I said electronics some American stuff that I couldn't get out in town like maybe Mountain Dew or uh, certain foods things like that you know when I would make uh, chili you know I'd get a lot of the ingredients from there and just you know stuff like that but for like most of my groceries I would get out in town either at uh, different little local grocery stores, convenies, convenience, convenience stores, uh, or this place that was very close to my apartment called Don Quixote, or Donkey for short. And what that is, it's basically kind of like, uh, kind of like Walmart on crack, basically. Um, they have a lot of, uh, like, food items, they have a lot of novelty items. Uh, typically when you hear about, you know, oh, Japan is so weird, they have this weird thing in the store. You know, that's typically from Don Quixote, actually. <laughs> but they do have, uh, in addition to like the novelty stuff, they do have a lot more uh, practical items, like food and uh, cleaning equipment, stuff like that. Like I said, it's, it's basically like Walmart, but with uh, kind of extreme novelty gifts and stuff like that. And I really, really wanted to make a video at my local donkey, but it, you know, just the timing was off and uh, I just couldn't make it happen, so. Sorry. <laughs> but it's definitely one of the things that I loved most about being in Japan was that store and just how unique it is. And there's also a chain called, I think, uh, Sanwa or something like that. Um, and that's basically, you know, it's legit the Japanese Walmart. It's set up very similarly to a Walmart. It's actually owned by Walmart, turns out. So you can actually use your gift cards there. So that, that was so weird. You know, I could get a lot of things. You know, stuff I couldn't get at Donkey, I could get over there just fine. Um, I know there's a lot of people who may be getting orders out to Japan, maybe worried like, oh, I'm not going to get to eat all this awesome, you know, American food out in Japan. And I got to say, you might be pleasantly surprised. And yes, the typical Japanese diet does consist of a lot of fish and rice. So they have like sushi go rounds, uh, conveyor belt sushi restaurants, where you just you go in and uh, you pay by, by the plate. Um, some dishes are very inexpensive, some are very, ex well, I mean, ex as expensive as sushi can be, right? So like, they can be like 100 yen, which is like a dollar. They can be like 500 yen, which is $5-ish. So, you know, you pay at the end of whenever you're done, <laughs> and you just pay by the plate. As someone who really didn't like uh, seafood, there's a difference between seafood in the States and then seafood in Japan, so, I didn't really like seafood to begin with, but coming to Japan, I learned to really enjoy it actually. And you know, I there was a sushi place right next door that I would go to sometimes to get my uh, my fish, <laughs> and it was really good. So as far as uh, that goes, there are a lot of uh, American style restaurants, um, especially within Yokosuka. There's places where you can get like really amazing hamburgers. Um, like one of the places I made a video on actually, uh, Snug Stador Cafe out in my local neighborhood of the time. Uh, they made probably the best burgers I've had in all of Japan. I think the only one that even comes close is America House out in Yokohama. But uh, <laughs> if I didn't want to take the train all the way out to Yokohama to get some burg, um, this was a pretty close second. So definitely gets points for being convenient, if anything. And uh, they also have, like, uh, on base, they have Taco Bell, so if you're, if you're jonesing for some American food, you know, like Mexican-style food, uh, they got Taco Bell, they got Popeyes, uh, Mean Jeans Burgers, you know, Mean Gene Okerlund from wrestling back in the day. Apparently he had his own burger chain, which didn't do very well stateside, but uh, has found a home elsewhere, <laughs> which is so weird, but uh, the burgers are, eh, <laughs> nothing to really write home about, but they're there. So if you're still jonesing for some American food, uh, there's a lot of plenty of stuff on base to where you can get your fix. And uh, if not, you can like make stuff. 
so there you go. Uh, one of the things I did miss during my time living in Japan was uh, not being able to uh, bake anything because um, the ovens out off base, um, there basically wasn't any. <laughs> they didn't exist. You just had like your, your stove top burners and that was pretty much it. Um, if you wanted to bake anything, like a pizza or a cake or something like that, um, you would have to buy like a, uh, like a little tiny convection oven type thing and it would obviously be a lot smaller than uh, your, a typical American oven here in the States. So you'd have to scale everything down. So that was one of the uh, the nice things uh, when I moved back to uh, to America. It was like, oh my God, there's a stove and I can cook things like pizza. <laughs> it's the little things, right? To me, it was pretty. Uh, it was a pretty small price to pay because yes, they do have like Domino's and Pizza Hut out uh, out in town, so you can order stuff like that. And I found uh, Domino's to be especially convenient because they their online ordering system was in English and it was just very well set up. And customize stuff, all that kind of thing. And then they also had another pizza pizza chain called Pizza La. It's like pizza and then LA. And they had something similar. It wasn't quite as nicely laid out as Domino's, but uh, you can pretty much get by. And one of the weird things that I noticed when ordering pizza out in Japan was uh, typical sides for pizza stateside is like uh, garlic sticks, you know, crazy bread stuff like that, breadsticks, um, garlic sticks, mozzarella sticks, things like that. Those are typical sides with pizza. In Japan, they don't don't really have those at the pizza places. They have stuff like uh, french fries, potato, as they call it, and uh, nuggets, chicken nuggets. <laughs> so that's typically what I would get if I would order pizza in Japan. And another thing to note is the size of food, and the size of everything really, um, is always a step down from what the American perception is of that size. So if you're going to say McDonald's and you know you want a number one large, the size of the large cup that you would expect in America is about a size down in Japan. So a large in Japan is basically an American medium. Just put it that way. So just keep that in mind if you're like really super hungry and you're like, why is my drink so small? What the fuck? It's just kind of how it is, which is probably why they're not all diabetes incarnate obese fucks out there. And also with clothes as well. That's another thing to consider is that uh, like say a large or an extra large out in Japan is about like uh, a medium, although clothes sizes are more like a half size down I found because not only are the clothes a little smaller but they have something called the Asian fit and uh, it's basically um, like a typical shirt kind of billows out uh, but the Asian fit kind of curves in so it like is it's a lot less loose fitting it's more kind of tight fitting so even if you get an XL it kind of hugs you a bit differently than like an Excel shirt that you'd order stateside. So just another thing to keep in mind. So, you know, for my example, since I wear XLs, um, they would basically just be like in between a large and an Excel. So they'd be a little bit smaller than an Excel, but a little bigger than a large. So just kind of keep that in mind for your respective size. And as far as like pant size and, and stuff like that, uh, being a bigger fella, that's kind of hard to find um, out in stores. So that was another thing that I bought on base was clothes. I just bought like jeans and khakis and shorts and stuff like that. I bought all that stuff on base. Uh, bought some shirts and stuff on base as well. But I did a lot of my shirt buying either online or just grabbed something like Uniqlo, which is a clothing store which had opened up very close to my house at the time. Or I would go just out in town find something. Uh, typically in Tokyo they do have sizes for some of the bigger fellas so like they have excels and stuff like that but those are either hit or miss depending on what you're looking for but I was always able to find excels out there so there you go and just you know getting used to the Japanese culture speaking Japanese stuff like that uh, for me since I was really into you know the whole Japan experience 
um, it was very easy for me to just kind of begin to learn how to speak like actual Japanese, not just little phrase books from a book or whatever. So I was much more into going out and meeting people and stuff like that, either through、uh, contacts that I'd made before I came out to Japan or just people I'd met in and around town, stuff like that. So yeah, that was、uh, how I improved my Japanese over there. As far as、uh, what level of Japanese or whatever the local language is to where you'll be stationed at,、um, you don't really need a whole lot, I would say.、Uh, maybe just a very basic knowledge of Japanese would be useful,、um, at least to be able to kind of say what you want to order, or if you're looking for something,、um, just, you know, just give you a basic idea of what that is. So for me, Uh, I didn't really have much of a problem interacting with Japanese people,、uh, getting to find stuff, things like that. But as far as having like, an in depth conversation with them, eh, <laughs> my level wasn't quite up there. But、uh, I was able to get by. So you don't have to worry if your Japanese is either not that good or non existent. You'll be able to get by just fine. Also, like I said, being stationed in、uh, mainland Japan, I was able to visit different parts. Of,、uh, of Japan, like、uh, Yokohama, which is about a 30 to 45 minute train ride away, or if you want to wait about an hour and a half to two hours, you could、uh, take a train ride all the way out to Tokyo. So I was able to do that on the weekends a lot and just have my fun out there, meet with friends, go out to Akihabara or Wachanu Mizu and buy stuff. So that was a lot of fun. And I really do miss. Living out in Japan, but being stationed out in Japan and just living in Japan,、um, either as like an English teacher or whatever the case may be, is a lot different.、Um, just the workload and the op tempo, operational tempo, living out in Japan, it's a lot more taxing than most people、uh, think it will be.、Um, for some people, they can handle it, but for me, it really.、Uh, Really started、uh, driving me nuts, to be honest with you. And it was part of the reason why my anxiety started really ramping up and I started getting panic attacks and it just really, really,、uh, really messed with my head brain. Even though I loved being in Japan and I loved Japan, but I just didn't like.、Uh, Being stationed out in Japan because of all the stress that was involved with that. That's why I eventually got out. <laughs> so, but in any event, as far as people who、uh, are thinking about being stationed overseas,、um, it's a pretty good gig, especially if you're E5 and up.、Uh, you get paid a whole lot of money being stationed overseas.、Um, I would highly suggest saving it up like I did.、Um, I basically put away. I think about four to five hundred bucks a check just in savings because I really didn't spend a whole lot. I mean, don't get me wrong, I spend money. It's not like I <laughs> stayed in my house the whole time like I do now because I can't afford to go out in town. You know, I definitely could afford to go out in town and I did, but I was also very careful to realize that I need to start saving up money so that way when I eventually get out, I'll have a nice little nest egg. And that's what happened. I got out, had a nice little nest egg, I was able to afford a car,、uh, moving expenses, living expenses until the GI Bill kicked in, all that kind of stuff. So, that is my main suggestion to you、uh, living out overseas is to save, 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 and don't blow all your money in port. You can still have fun, just be mindful of how much you're spending, be sure to a lot. Money towards your savings account so that way you have a nice little nest egg either for emergency situations like if something were to happen you need to fly back home or just in the long run if you plan on getting out or retirement or whatever the case may be it's always good to have money in savings because it's not what you make it's what you save so sure write that down so that's kind of the basic gist of my time in Japan if you guys want a more detailed Look at my time in Japan. I'll be sure to put the Andy Japandy playlist in the links down below in the description in the boobity boops. So be sure to check that out. But for now, 
this is the Andy Sun signing off for now. <laughs> Thanking you guys for tuning into this video and for watching my other stuff. And if you have any uh, suggestions for topics that you would like me to talk about, uh, about my time in the Navy, stuff like that, be sure to leave a little something something in the comments down below in the boobity boops. And uh, I'll do my best to respond. And uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, watching this video and my other stuff. Also, I want to thank you guys for liking with the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.